I think let's do Argentina, man, because uh, this is a really exciting story. So I'll just set this up. You know, this is something that I've been uh, trying to cover as much as possible over the past uh, few months since co uh, coronavirus um, started, because what was happening in Argentina was really such a horrific story of international finance just strangling a country in the middle of a pandemic. So if you missed the kind of, um, you know, the setup to this, let me take you through real quick. Over the years, Argentina has had significant issues with their currency um, and also dealing with international uh, finance, which it was made much worse under the far, the like neoliberal uh, Macri government that just left power. It was all about austerity. Um, they brought in a significant, um, got something around like a $57 billion loan uh, from the IMF, which I believe is the IMF's largest loan to a single country. So this is a country that was extremely indebted. And you have um, Fernandez, who was elected very recently, um, come into power with this massive uh, economic disaster, again, from the free market friendly um, former right wing government. Um, trying to find a way to one, negotiate with these bondholders and the international credit uh, facilities that they had to deal with while also managing this pandemic. So as everybody's dealing with these lockdowns um, and this you know, general struggle of dealing with uh, coronavirus, the finance minister of Argentina was constantly having to be on the phone um, with bondholders, right? Uh, particularly bondholders from the United States and Europe, um, including obviously um, you know, the, the pigs at BlackRock. Um, who have gotten a nice uh, cozy position in the Biden administration, yep. it must be it must be mentioned. Um, so this is going on. Um, and basically, the bondholders are refusing to allow them um, to limit their payments, or at least get a little bit of a, you know, of a break while they're dealing with this coronavirus uh, crisis, which again, was insane. Um, for, if you want to get paid back, I mean, it's a bizarre situation. To be talking, don't want to get paid back. Um, and that's exactly what will happen. In a, in a situation where you just completely tank the economy because you're making the government pay off, um, you know, these massive rates, the bondholders. So that was something we were covering um, over the, you know, the past few months. Um, and I'll just add this analysis for people to understand too. The reason these bondholders were so fixated on making an example of Argentina was because they needed to send a message to all these other countries across the globe that they will not bend despite the fact that there's a global pandemic going on, that they will not accept any less um, than you know, the maximum amount of profit that they can squeeze out of a struggling country, right? Um, so that disgusting chapter um, ends and they were able to, Argentina was able to negotiate you know, a meager cut, not enough, but a meager cut so that they could at least function on some level as, as a government. And now they're having to deal with the IMF, which again, I said, um, they have gone massively in debt to uh, because of the McCree government and also because they do need uh, capital right now to be able to function as a government to be able to take care of people during this crisis. So this is all going on, right? This big fight with international finance. Um, but I want to share some, you know, good news, at least for the class struggle, um, was that uh, Argentina Senate uh, just passed a one-time millionaire's tax um, against the wealthiest people in Argentina, which should be noted, um, the rich have been leaving the country to basically spend the, the crisis in Uruguay so that they can mm -hmm. avoid one being in Argentina and two, um, because they have these hopes of basically being freed from any kind of societal obligations, um, even though they own the vast majority of the wealth in the society. Right, because Uruguay's handled COVID uh, stellarly so far. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, but basically it also was becoming a bit of a tax haven uh, for Argent Argentine millionaires. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, these aren't, this isn't just anecdotal, like Uruguay, um, they're non as an observer, so the banner, um, they have 500 million more dollars than the beginning of the pandemic uh, from people who basically come over there. So there is significant capital flight going on. Um, but anyways, the, the Senate was able to pass this, uh, you know, millionaire's tax, um, which is going to come, um, you know, at one to three um, percent of, of millionaires wealth. Um, and it's going to affect people who have uh, over 200 million pesos. Uh, which is about $2.4 million in the USD. Um, so, you know, it's a significant, a significant victory. And basically, uh, following through on Fernandez's promise uh, that he made very early in the, the pandemic, uh, where he told the, the, uh, the business class and the, and the wealthiest uh, something along the lines of, boys, it's time for you to pay more. 
Um, so we'll continue uh, trying to show solidarity with the people of Argentina again as they try to face this, you know, significant human crisis of the COVID pandemic. Trying to make sure that people aren't thrown out into the streets and are able to get the minimum standard, um, or hopefully uh, higher than that, but you know, a standard of living so that they can get through this pandemic safely. And it just shows again. Um, I, I think more arguments are important. I think it's not worth it to get too deep into it um, because it can be a little bit distracting at times. But the fact is this, is that these people are, the the wealthy in that society are disgusting. That they're actually gonna let the country rot um, to protect their, uh, you know, their, their assets instead of recognizing that they're parts of a society as well. And we all have responsibilities to one another. Yeah, I mean, that's out the window for those guys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the super wealthy. I mean, they just they just go Amy Siskin on it and say maybe we should oh hell yeah new borders. Um, uh, yeah, that's unbelievable. I didn't know that about Uruguay becoming a bit of a tax haven for Argentine millionaires. That's uh, fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like the thing is, is that we live in a in a in a globe right now where where money uh, has no borders, right? Where you're basically able to to move money where wherever you want and uh, you know it creates these really nasty um you know situations where basically you can just see it when people actually i want to make this point uh, because i think it's an important philosophical point this is a struggle for democracy right if you live in a society and you believe in the idea of democracy that people have the right to make decisions over the way that society is going to be governed right then the people should have the authority to see those policies followed through on what we're seeing in Argentina is this fight where you have an international capitalist class. I'm talking about the Argentine millionaires, but also, you know, American, uh, you know, bondholders who want to get paid by the government, basically saying we're going to refuse the democratic will of the society and we want to play by our own rules. This is a human struggle, but it's, it's also fundamentally just a basic struggle for democracy to say that if you believe in the principles of democracy, that everyone should be subject to the same rules, right? Because the poor don't have those kind of rights. The poor can't just say, oh, actually, we're not going to play ball. Um, with the with the new rules of the government we're not gonna you know we're gonna hide our money that not, they, not that working people have too much well they get demonized right. as caravans by uh, fox news if they try to do something like that exactly exactly man i mean anyways though solidarity to the you know, to the government there um as they continue to fight and remember too fernandez is not some kind of like radical lefty socialist this is very much just like kind of being pragmatic center left governance saying we have a crisis right now we need to fund uh, public uh, public services in the middle of a pandemic, and I think that they should have every right to pursue that goal. <laughs> well, he's doing it because he wants to help people, and not because he's like worried about getting shamed by Jacobin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>